5x is greater than 45, or 3x is greater than 12. So I need to solve each inequality separately. 5x was greater than 45. So I need to solve each inequality separately. So x, I need to divide 5 by both sides. Since I'm dividing by a positive number, I don't have to change the direction of the inequality. And for the second one, I divide 3 on both sides. So that gives me x is greater than 4. I have to plot both of these on a number line. 4 is less than 9, so I put 4 on the left, 9 on the right. Both of these are greater than, so I'm going to put open circles above both of them. x is greater than 9, so that means all the numbers greater than 9 will satisfy that inequality. x is greater than 4 means all the numbers greater than 4, or to the right of 4, will satisfy that inequality. Next, I'm looking at the word, the compound inequality, or. Or means where am I covered from the rain. So if I'm walking from left to right on this number line, my coverage starts at 4 and continues on until infinity. And remember, infinities never get brackets. Infinities always get parentheses. And the rain is going to fall through uh, the open circle at 4, so I have to exclude it from my domain or from my solutions. That's the first question. The first one, second question is 6 is greater than or equal to n over 6 plus 3, or negative 12 is greater than negative n over 3 minus 6. 6 is greater than or equal to n over 6 plus 3, or negative 12 greater than negative n over 3 minus 6. All right. So here, again, we solve each inequality separately. So we subtract the 3 first. So that gives me 3 is greater than or equal to n over 6. I can multiply both sides by the 6 to solve for n. So that gives me 18 is greater than or equal to n. Or n is less than or equal to 18. I prefer to have the variables on the left so that I don't make a, a silly mistake uh, drawing the direction of the arrows. For the second one, again, I have to add the 6 to the left-hand side. So that gives me negative 6 is greater than negative n over 3. Now here I have to multiply both sides by 3. So that would give me negative 18 is greater than negative n. And then I have to multiply both sides by negative 1 to get rid of that negative. But remember, if we multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative, that's going to change the direction of the inequality. So this becomes 18 is less than n. So now, and we could have also rewritten this, n is greater than 18. So if I draw my number line, I have 18. That's the only number I have in the middle. From n is less than or equal to 18, I'm going to draw a closed circle. For n is greater than 18, I would draw an open circle, but it's really just on top of the closed circle that's already there. So there's only one circle, and the solid one takes precedence. It basically fills in the, the empty one n is less than or equal to 18, those will be all the numbers to the left of 18. n is greater than 18, all the numbers to the right of 18. And now we're looking at the compound inequality. We're looking at an or statement. So where are we covered from the rain? Everywhere. So the solution would be negative infinity to infinity. Let's see if this matches any of them. This would match answer choice D. Looking at the next one, we have, um, I'm actually going to, uh, I'll just do it. Negative 3x is greater than or equal to 12. Negative 4x is greater than or equal to 8. So we would divide both sides by negative 3, so that would yield x is less than or equal to negative 4. Remember, we're dividing both sides by negative, so we have to change the direction of the inequality. Or... Um, divide again by negative 4, so that would give us x is less than or equal to negative 2. So I'm going to take my number line, put negative 4 on the left, negative 2 on the right. Both of these are less than or equal to, so I'm going to put a solid dot above each. x is less than or equal to 4 means all the numbers to the left of negative 4 are going to work. 
x is less than or equal to negative 2 means all the numbers to the left of negative 2 are going to work. And again, it's an or compound inequality. That means you're asking, where are we covered from the rain? We're covered everywhere from negative infinity to negative 2. And we are covered exactly at negative 2 because of the closed dot there. So we would use uh, square brackets there. That's the solution for number three. For number four, we have 2x is less than or equal to 6, or 7x is greater than 63. So here, we divide both sides by 2. I don't have to change the inequality because I'm dividing by a positive. Here, I would get x is greater than 9. Again, I'm dividing by a positive number, so I don't have to change the direction of the inequality. I make a number line, 3 on the left, 9 on the right. Solids dot for 3, open dot for 9. And then x is less than or equal to 3 means all the numbers to the left of 3. x is greater than 9 means all the numbers greater than 9. And it's an or problem, so that means, again, we're asking, where are we covered from the rain? So the coverage starts at negative infinity, comma, 3. And at 3, we're protected from the rain. So square brackets there. Union, the coverage starts again at 9. But 9 is not included, since there's an open circle there. And it continues until positive infinity. Again, remember, we're reading intervals from left to right. So imagine that there's raindrops all over the place. We're protected here until we walk to here. Uh, but then here we're getting wet. And then again, starting here, we start the protection, but we're still getting wet at 9, but then we're covered after that. Uh, that was number 4. Number 5 is... 8x is less than or equal to 72, or 3x is greater than 3. So divide both sides by 8. That gives us 8. Uh, x is less than or equal to 9. Divide both sides by 3. That gives me x is greater than 1. 1 on the left, 9 on the right. Open circle above 1, close circle above 9 x is less than or equal to 9 means all the numbers to the left of 9. x is greater than 1 means all the numbers to the right of 1. Now because it's an or problem, we're asking where are we covered from the rain. So imagine again there's rain falling all over the place. We're covered everywhere. So in this region between 1 and 9, we're double covered. So imagine that's the example where you have an umbrella and a, rain, a raincoat or a rain jacket. So here, the answer would be negative infinity to infinity. Let's look at number 6. My, uh, 6x is greater than 30. Now we're transitioning to some AND problems. 4x is greater than 20. So again, divide by 6, so you get x is greater than 5. Divide by 4, x is greater than 5. Only number we have is 5, so I stick a 5 in the middle. They're both greater than, so I have an open circle for both of them. Now, just as an FYI, if one of these were greater than or equal to, then the closed circle would sort of lay on top of the open one and close that as well. But since we don't have that, it would just remain open for both of them. And in, in, for both inequalities, we're getting x is greater than 5. So we just have one arrow going to the right, or you can imagine there being two arrows going to the right. So it's just one on top of the other. It's an and problem. So where are the two arrows overlapping? If you want to see both of them, maybe that makes it a little bit easier. The two arrows are overlapping from 5 all the way to infinity. They're not overlapping at 5 because there is no solid dot at 5. So I have to exclude that. Exclusion implies that we have to use parentheses. one is number 7, 2x is less than or equal to 18, 
5x is greater than 15. So divide both sides by 2, which gives me x is less than or equal to 9. Oh, forgot which compound inequality this was. This was and. And x is greater than 3. Divide both sides by 5. The inequalities stay as they are because we're not multiplying or dividing by a negative. 3 goes on the left. 9 goes on the right. Solid dot above the 9. Hollow dot above the 3. X is less than or equal to 9 means all the numbers to the left of 9. X is greater than 3 means all the numbers to the right of 3. And because we're looking for an AND, we're looking for where the sandwich is or where the overlap is. The overlap is right here. The overlap starts at 3 and ends at 9. Both functions, not both functions, sorry, both inequalities do have 9 included. Uh, the crust of the bread is present on both slices at 9, but it is not present on the top slice at 3. So I don't have an overlap at 3. I do have an overlap at 9. So the, the interval that we're looking at is from 9, sorry, from 3 to 9. Number 8. 3x is greater than 21. 6x is less than or equal to 18. So divide both sides by 3. x is greater than 7. Divide both sides by 6. x is less than or equal to 3. 3 on the left. 7 on the right. Open circle above the 7. Close circle above the 3. x is greater than 7 means all the numbers to the right of 7 work. x is less than or equal to 3 means all the numbers to the left of 3 work. It's an AND problem, so we're looking for an overlap, and there is no overlap, so this would be no solution. So if you're taking this test on paper, you can either write the words no solution, you can write um, this Greek symbol phi, which is kind of like a zero with a slash through it. It means the same thing, no solution. And you can also use curly brackets. Uh, to indicate an empty set. So on Edfinity, I believe, yeah. So it, it says to use empty set if necessary. In this case, you would need to use the empty set because there's no solution. Number nine. We have negative 2x is less than 12. And 2x is less than or equal to 4. So we divide by negative 2, which means we're going to change the direction of the inequality. Divide by 2, we're not going to change the direction of the inequality. Negative 6 on the left, 2 on the right. Uh, open circle above the negative 6, close circle above the 2. x is greater than negative 6 means numbers to the right of negative 6 x is less than or equal to 2 means numbers to the left of 2. And because it's an AND, we're looking for an overlap. Overlap is right here in the middle. There is no overlap at negative 6, so I have to exclude it. There is an overlap at 2, so I have to include that. That would be your solution as an interval. Looking at 10, I believe this is where the problems are starting. So we have 0 is less than 2 n, 0 is less than or equal to 2 n plus 6 or 30 is greater than 3 n plus 6. So here again, just like all the others we've done, we solve each inequality for the variable that we're given. So we sub start by subtracting 6 from both sides, so we get negative 6 is less than or equal to 2 n. We divide both sides by 2. Because I'm dividing by a positive, I'm not going to change the direction of the inequality. I'm just going to write it again, reversed, so that the variable is on the left-hand side. Similarly, we solve the, the one on the right-hand side by subtracting 6 first, so that gives me 24 is greater than 3n. I'm going to divide both sides by 3, not changing the direction of the inequality because I'm dividing by a positive. And then I'm just going to reverse it so that the n is on the left, the variables on the left.
And now I can plot my two numbers, negative 3 and 8. Solid dot above the negative 3. Open circle above the 8. n is greater than or equal to negative 3. All the numbers to the right, and right of negative 3. n is less than 8. All the numbers to the left of 8. Because it's an OR problem, the solution should be everything. All of the number line is covered from the ring. Let's see what this looks like on infinity. So it won't be A, obviously. Hopefully it's obvious because not everything is covered. Uh, it can't be C because not everything is covered. It can't be D because not everything is covered. So one hopes that you can get to this by process of elimination and get B. Um, and even if you don't, now what they're saying here, I think, the mistake or the, the miscommunication is occurring here is that students are thinking that both these numbers are covered um, or included in the final answer. That's not the case. If you're looking at the individual graphs, in the overall answer, the overall answer is everything from negative infinity to positive infinity, which is to say, if I were to make another number line on top of it, this would be what represents the negative infinity to infinity. So I think the confusion is, is arising because here students are expecting there to be an, a closed circle here but an open circle here. If we did that, then the solution would be from negative infinity to 8, union 8 to infinity. That's why they're both closed. They're both closed because the only way to indicate that the solution is from negative infinity to positive infinity is everything has to be shaded. Now, it would be a lot easier if we just didn't have these numbers here, but that I think that is what's causing the confusion. Let's look at the next one. This one is 11. We have 1 is greater than or equal to n plus 4. And 22 is just less than 2n plus 14. So here we subtract 4, which gives us negative 3 is greater than or equal to n. I'm just going to rewrite it so that the variable is on the left side. Uh, here we can subtract the 14, which gives me 8 is less than 2n. Divide both sides by 2, which gives me 4 is less than n. And then rearrange it so that the variable is on the left. Oops. n is greater than 4. So if we draw this on number line, negative 3 on the left, 4 on the right. Negative 3 gets a closed circle. 4 gets an open circle. n is less than or equal to negative 3. means all the numbers to the left of negative 3. n is greater than 4 means all the numbers to the right of 4. And here we're looking for an and. And means we're looking for an overlap. There is no overlap, so you would say no solution. Or... If you're writing this on paper, you can say uh, the Greek symbol phi, which indicates an empty set. Or for infinity, you would need to use curly brackets. And let's look at what's happening here. So here, according to this picture, I think the confusion's probably going to rise because, I mean, there's no overlap, so it can't be C and it can't be D. Now between A and B, B is saying that the solution, the final answer, the overall answer, contains negative 3 and 4. No solution means nothing on the line has to be shaded. So there's no red region here, there's no red region here, there's no red region here. I think the programmer is saying that negative 3 is not included, neither is negative 4 in the final answer. Let's see if that's what they're agreeing. Yeah, they're saying that A is the final answer which hopefully makes sense because you're saying uh, this is the intermediate graph. The final answer would be nothing. That There is no, now you can say negative 3 here neg and positive 4 here, but nothing is being shaded in the final region or in the final answer because there's no solution. The solution would have been the thing that you would have shaded. But here, nothing is shaded in part A. In part B, they're saying negative 3 is a part of the solution and 4 is a part of the solution. So B cannot be the answer because there are no solutions. 
Hopefully that makes sense. Let's move on to 12. Negative 1 is greater than n minus 1. 18 is greater than 2n plus 2. So here, add the negative 1 to the left side, which would give us 0 is greater than n. Uh, subtract the 2, and then divide both sides by 2. And then rearrange so that the n is on the left-hand side. So we have 0 on the left, we have 8 on the right. And here I'm just going to rearrange it so that the variable is on the left side. So open circle above the 0, open circle above the 8. 0, n is less than 0 means numbers to the left of 0. n is less than 8 means numbers to the left of 8. Now because it's an AND, we're looking for an overlap. So the overlap would be here. That's where the two lines are on top of each other. Now, if you were to draw this as just one solution, you would need to say 0, 8, and then the solution would be starting not at 0, but then extending to the left. And then the arrow going to the left. So this region would be the final answer. And as an interval, you would say negative infinity to 0, but not including 0 because the crust on the bottom piece of bread is cut off. Let's see what this looks like on infinity. So it can't be a, because this is not negative infinity to 0. It can't be c, because, well, 8 is not on the left of 0, so this is just wrong. Um, it can't be d, because this arrow is going from 0 to infinity. That's not our solution. It has to be b, and in fact, that's exactly the, the graph that I drew. So open circle at 0 with a line going to the left. That's what they're asking you guys to match. Continuing on, 13. Nine is less than or equal to negative n over six plus seven, or negative one is greater than or equal to negative n over two minus seven. So we solve for n, just like we have in all the other problems in the past. Subtract the 7 first, so that gives us neg uh, 2 is less than or equal to negative n over 6. Multiply the 6 over to the other side, which gives me neg uh, 12 is less than or equal to negative n. And now we can multiply both sides by a negative 1, but when I do that, I have to change the direction of the inequality. I'm going to rearrange this so that the n is on the left-hand side. So we get n is less than or equal to negative 12. That's the first one solved. For the second one, uh, let's move the negative 7 over. So that becomes 6 is greater than or equal to negative n over 2. Going to multiply both sides by 2. So that gives me 12 is greater than or equal to negative n. Multiply both sides by negative 1. Changing the direction of the inequality. And then just rearranging so that the n, the variables on the left-hand side. In this case, they're both greater than or equal to, and they're both at negative 12. So I have a solid dot above the negative 12 for the first one, and I have another solid dot above the negative 12 for the second one. n is less than or equal to negative 12 means all the numbers to the left of negative 12. n is greater than or equal to negative 12 means all the numbers to the right of negative 12. Is this an and? This was an or problem. So we're asking, where are we covered from the rain? We're actually covered all over the number line. So we're covered here for sure. At negative 12, we're covered twice. And then we're covered again past that. So we would say negative infinity to infinity. And then the solution to this is probably negative 12 with a solid dot here with everything shaded to the left and to the right. Let's take a look at the options. Uh, can't be D because nothing shaded here. Can't be A, because only the part in the middle is shaded, not everything. Um, could be B, but I don't know where they got negative 1 and 9 from, so it can't be that. It's got to be C, which is exactly what we had. Negative 12 in the middle, with line going to the left, line going to the right.
14. These ones, I'm actually going to stop here because these ones, no one really had any issues with techni technology wise. These were well behaved questions that were working for everyone. Uh, if someone didn't get these right, it's because the solutions were actually wrong, not because the, the app was or Edfinity was misbehaving. So I'm going to stop here, see if there's any others. These are all the two variable ones, two variable, two variable. This is one variable, so let's do this one. Two is negative twelve is less than two n minus twelve. Negative twenty one is greater than or equal to three n minus twenty four. All right, so we add the twelve to the left side, which would give me zero is less than two n. Then we divide both sides by two, so that gives me zero is less than n. Moving the n to the left hand side, just to rearrange. We add the 24, so we get, oops, 3 is greater than or equal to 3n. Then we divide both sides by 3, so we get 1 is greater than or equal to n, rearranging just so that the variable's on the left. So I put 0, 1 on the number line. Greater than 0 means open circle. Less than or equal to 1 means closed circle. n is greater than 0 means all the numbers to the right of 0 n is less than or equal to 1 means all the numbers to the left of 1. It's an AND problem, so we're looking for an overlap. Overlap is right here. So the answer on infinity should be 0, 1, open circle here, closed circle here, with just the, the stuff in the middle being shaded here. So just this region. Not here, not here. And the overlap would be from 0 to 1, including 1, because I have solid dot above and the line continues here. Open circle at 0 means I don't have the crust on the bottom slice of bread, so it's excluded. It, that's not where the overlap occurs. Let's take a look at infinity. So it can't be A because it doesn't show an overlap. It can't be B because there's no line here. It's saying only 1 is the solution. That's not the case. D is showing the entire number line. That's not the solution. And indeed, C is the answer that we got. Open circle at 0, close circle at 1, with this line shaded in the middle. And that's exactly what we have here. Open circle at 0, close circle at 1, line shaded in the middle. So just to confirm, yep, they're saying C is the answer. Uh, hopefully that helps. The two variable ones uh, were behaving well. At least no one's reported any issues with these. But I'm hoping that this kind of gets you through uh, the questions that maybe folks had trouble with. Hopefully this helps.